We live in a golden age for licensed racing game content. Between Race Room, Gran Turismo 7, iRacing, R Factor 2, WRC Generations, Assetto Corsa Competizione, Automobilista 2 and many others, petrol heads are spoilt for choice with regard to emulating their racing heroes from the comfort of their own homes. As far as fully licensed motorsport games go, we have MotoGP represented by MotoGP 22, the World Superbike Championship by SBK 22, the World Rally Championship by WRC Generations, the GT World Challenge by Assetto Corsa Competizione, Formula One by EA Sports F1 22 and many more. With other official championships and video game collaborations set to hit the shelves in the next two years, we wondered if any other motorsport disciplines deserve their own standalone racing game. Andros Trophy. The annual Andros Trophy or Trophée and <coughs> or Trophée Andros. <coughs> or Trophée Andros. The annual Andros Trophy races will probably be the least familiar to most of our readers, seeing as it's a regional ice racing mini series. But that doesn't mean to say that it isn't a spectacular feat of driving skill. Taking place since the 1990s, it's held annually on ice circuits across several car classes, with the cars featuring titanium studded tyres and four wheel steering. In recent times, the series has gone full electric, with Renault, Peugeot, and Audi all represented albeit their body shells are married to the same specification 1130 kilos Andro Sport 01 chassis. Most of the racing takes place in France, although the championship did visit Canada in 2003 for a round and there are regular trips to nearby Andorra. Over the years, drivers such as Sebastian Loeb, Jacques Villeneuve, Olivier Panis and Roman Grosjean have all taken part in the Andros Trophy with former Formula One world champion Alain Prost becoming a three-time champion. The absolute king of the Andros Trophy, however, is Ivan Muller. As well as being a quadruple world touring car champion, the Frenchman has won the Andros Trophy a record 10 times, notching up 48 race victories along the way. Most of the time, these pocket rockets are going sideways, so much so that the drivers have windscreen wipers that fix their side windows. A pack of baying Andros Trophy racers going side by side between the steep ice banking of Val Terenz is a sight to behold, and in our opinion deserves to be seen in a video game. The British Superbikes Championship or BSB is perhaps the biggest domestic motorcycle racing championship in the world. Featuring alumni like World Superbike champions Neil Hodgson, Carl Fogarty, Jonathan Ray and Troy Bayliss, the British Superbike Championship has shown itself to be the ideal proving ground for riders looking to make the move onto the world stage. Although BSB runs on major British tracks such as Donington Park, Brands Hatch and Alton Park, the series also visits lesser known circuits like Cadwell and Knock Hill, which often provide the closest and most exciting racing action. This combination of skilled riders and challenging tracks makes the BSB a spectacular sight. No less spectacular is the range of bikes entered by manufacturers including Ducati, Yamaha, Kawasaki and Honda. Ranging from 1000cc to 1200cc for two-cylinder bikes, British Championship Superbikes are obscenely fast, easily topping 200 miles an hour if given a long enough straight. Thanks to Milestone's SBK22, we have been treated to the World Superbike Series in a video game format. The World Superbike Championship uses similar bikes to the BSB, so it wouldn't be a stretch to add in all the BSB teams and tracks to the new standalone game, albeit without the World Superbike's divergent electronic rules. And let's not forget the BSB's competitive support packages, including the National Super Stock 1000 and 600 series the British Supersport Championship and the British Junior Supersport Championship for riders aged 13 years and up. Plenty of content to keep gamers satisfied then, but would there be enough demand for a BSB game? The Porsche Mobile One Super Cup is perhaps the most prestigious single make series in the world. With a grid of identical Porsche 911 GT3 Cup 992 cars featuring ambitious young professional drivers, seasoned veterans and talented amateurs. The races are fast and frenetic with a glorious flat six soundtrack. 
Thanks to its position as a support series for selected Formula 1 events, the Porsche Super Cup runs on several of the world's most lauded circuits, Monte Carlo, Silverstone, Monza and Spa-Francorchamps to name a few. However, the car is the star in this case as the new generation of Porsche's 911 Cup is an extremely effective piece of German engineering. The 992 edition of the GT3 Cup car has over 500 horsepower and no driving age, making it an absolute beast to control, with its rear engine layout presenting a unique challenge to the grid. Introduced to the Super Cup in 2021, the car has now been adopted by national Porsche series across the globe, including the Porsche Carrera Cup GB and Carrera Cup Deutschland. The car has also made its way into sim racing too, appearing in Assetto Corsa Competizione, iRacing and R Factor 2. Wouldn't it be great to see a full-blown Porsche Super Cup or Carrera Cup GB series represented in one of these sims, or in a new sim in the future? CIK FIA Karting World Championship Karting is motorsport in its purest form. Those are not my words, those come directly from three-time F1 World Champion and all-round racing legend Ayrton Senna. He famously stated that karting was pure racing, pure driving, there was no politics, no money involved. I have fond memories of that time. Surprisingly, the Brazilian maestro never won the Karting World Championship, but was hugely successful in his homeland. Regardless, karting remained his automotive first love. And you can see why, as today the Karting World Championship is a hotbed of the future and current motorsport talent. Most of today's Formula One grid learnt their trade in karting, with Nick De Vries a twice and Lando Norris a single world champion in 2010 and 11 and 14 respectively. Max Verstappen, Fernando Alonso, Alex Albon and Charles Leclerc have also won other FIA certified international karting honours, exemplifying the importance of karting to future F1 stars. And we as modern sim racers are spoilt for choice in terms of karting content, thanks to Kartcraft, Kart Racing Pro and KartSim for R Factor 2 with other sims such as Automobilista 2 and Gran Turismo 7 including their own interpretations of the discipline. Karting is all about racecraft. The ability to race wheel to wheel with your competitors and form race and tyre strategies while maximising your overall kart package. Races are often settled by hundredths of a second with the lightweight and agile chassis teaching pilots to drive on the limit of adhesion. Wet weather also provided an ideal opportunity for karters to learn the wet lines the areas around the racing line unaffected by rubbering in. Imagine playing on an officially licensed karting sim with all of the big money karts from Tony Kart, CRG, Kart Republic, Birrell, at venues such as La Conca, Sarno, Genk and Le Mans, complete with changeable weather conditions and grids filled with aggressive AI. Now that's pure motorsport right there. Supercars. Australia's premier touring car series finds itself in a period of transition as we wave goodbye to the Gen 2 cars and say hello to the new low downforce spec Gen 3s for 2023. The 2023 Repco Supercars Championship in some ways has lost its unique Aussie identity thanks to the loss of Holden, a national institution. However, another General Motors brand, Chevrolet, steps into the breach facing off against the battalion of Ford Mustangs across 12 rounds. The cars have been designed with overtaking in mind, ideal for a touring car series with over 20 entries, and the series organiser has taken extra steps to ensure both cars are as equal as possible ahead of the new season. The good news is, both cars sound bloody awesome. Although the Supercars series has featured in video games under its former guise as V8 Supercars, when the Toka Race Driver franchise had officially licensed cars and liveries, iRacing holds the license to recreate the championship's modern vehicles in-game. In fact, the official Supercars E-Series championship uses iRacing for its pro and all-star races, featuring real-world Supercars stars like Brody Kostecki, Andre Heimgartner and three-time champion Shane Van Gisbergen. Wouldn't it be great to see iRacing turn its attention to supercars in the same way it supported the latest World of Outlaws game? Although Australia has some tremendous tracks, Phillip Island, Adelaide and Sandown spring to mind, the jewel in the supercar crown is undoubtedly Mount Panorama Bathurst. Home of the Bathurst 1000, a showcase event for Australian motorsport, 
the venue has made national heroes of the likes of Peter Brock, Mark Scape and Craig Lowndes, all cheered on by a passionate following, divided into Ford and Holden camps of course. A game featuring the full Supercars Championship, with its Bathurst, Adelaide, Sandown and Surface Paradise Enduro rounds, plus its supporting Super 2 and Super 3 series, sounds like a winner to me. If any developer wants to take on a Supercars game, I have one message for you. Take my money! There we have it, a few ideas on which motorsport series we think would make a great standalone video game. Do you agree with our list, or do you think there are other series that would translate well into their own video game franchises? Let us know in the comments below, subscribe to the channel for more racing game videos just like this, and hit the notification bell to make sure you catch them when they're released. Until next time, thanks for watching, have a great day, and keep it pinned.